Hi guys, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and welcome to the video. Today I'm gonna to go over what FIV is in the kitty cat. That is feline immunodeficiency virus. What it looks like, what to expect, and just overall guys, how to manage a cat with FIV. FIV can be found all over the entire world. It is most commonly spread in male cats. This happens because FIV is spread by a bite wound. Bite wounds or fighting is the primary way of spreading. Now of course, you can definitely have a female cat given it to their kittens when they're being born, but it's far, far, far less of a likelihood. FIV first came around in the 1980s. Since then, about one to 5% of the cat population has been exposed to it in some capacity. The FIV can definitely cause immune deficiency problems like repeat ear infections or nasal infections or upper airway infections or those kind of things. But if we don't have major bacterial, viral, or fungal infections, the FIV may cause a waxing and waning. But until we get a significant deficiency in the immune system, these cats can live a very normal and happy life. Now the challenging thing is, we want to be really careful if you have other cats in your house. Because if the kitty cat that has FIV is a biter or likes to fight, that can definitely spread it. So specialists recommend two things. One, the cat should live by themselves, be a solo kitty in the house, and they should never go outside. That prevents them from spreading any FIV. I'm a little bit cautious about this one. I'm not a big fan of it either. But they also say if, they're, if the pecking order and the social dynamic is very healthy in the environment, there is rarely, there is a really low chance of spreading it from sharing water bowls or just close contact. They really need to be fighting and having trauma to spread it. Still, a word of caution. I would be very, very, very cautious about having an FIV cat live with a negative FIV cat. How is a veterinarian diagnose it? A veterinarian is going to do an ELISA test, and this is going to be an antibody test. And as they run the ELISA test, it's going to pop up positive or negative based on the antibodies. Now, this means that the virus has produced an immune response in the cat and they now have antibodies and now they're positive so you have a diagnosis. Now, you can definitely have false negatives, meaning you run the test and it's negative and you're like, hmm, that's surprising. This is because FIV has three stages. You will have the acute phase where the cat is exposed, maybe by a bite wound, and it's taking time to develop. So you may not be, have the antibodies yet to show a positive diagnosis. The asymptomatic phase, they're going to be positive. And then you have the progressive phase where they're actually really sick later in life. And that phase, their immune system might be so compromised, they're not producing enough antibodies. So in the acute and also in the progressive phase, you may not get a positive diagnosis. You usually do, but it's possible that you won't get a positive diagnosis in these two categories. Now, if the kitty is diagnosed with FIV in the pet hospital, that's an antibody test. What the veterinarian can do next is send it off for a Western blot or a PCR, polymerase chain reaction test, to see if they can actually identify the organism. The other thing to be careful about is kittens can be positive too. This is because it's an antibody test. So if mommy gives kitten antibodies to the FIV virus, that does not mean that they have FIV. It means they have the antibodies. You should always have your veterinarian retest, preferably 60 days out or in the cat is over six months. If they're still positive then, yeah, you probably have FIV. But if they convert to negative, it just means that mommy kitty gave them some antibodies and everything's okay. Your veterinarian is gonna do a handful of things to manage the FIV case. Now, regular physical exams to make sure that we're maintaining weight, making sure that we're eating and drinking, not, not lethargic, no fever, all these things we don't wanna have, making sure that we're doing okay. Now, if we have repeat problems from underlying infections that are showing up because of the immune system not being great, your veterinarian should treat that on a regular basis. The real problem is, guys, when these infections get so bad that they're happening nonstop, or fevers aren't breaking, or we're losing weight, if we're having major issues like that, that tells us that we're in trouble, and it may be a quality life discussion with your veterinarian about if the FIV has progressed to the point where we've lost quality of life. FIV is one of those diseases where you need to really educate yourself and give the kitty a chance if they're asymptomatic or in the acute phase and they're acting really normal because these cats can live a very long life and a very normal life with good husbandry. 
And of course, guys, humans are not at risk of getting FIV. Only cats, and again, it's only through bites or wounds that the cat can spread from cat to cat. Humans are not affected. FIV is very species specific. And guys, if this content has been helpful for you, please like and subscribe. It really helps these videos, and they'd be great.